What is up everybody, this is your host Superside and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be doing a full total guide of all the tips, all the tricks and all the secrets of Seaport. And I have got, a, like, I've got some really, really interesting stuff. I can absolutely guarantee you that you won't know everything I'm about to say in this video. So yes, here we are with the Seaport game, an awesome game, it reminds me a bit of Boom Beach. But I was like, I, I saw all the update stuff and that with Jules Verne and, and other things that they changed around, plus my, my other Seaport video ranked number one on, if you search Seaport, as well as the fact that I thought of some new stuff that I forgot to put in the last video, so I'm like, eh. I'll do another video. So this here is going to be the official guide and tutorial thing of Seaport with a ton of interesting information. I guarantee you'll learn something. So this account, it's different to me, my old account that I did the other video because I've done the other video. I like continued playing it for like a month after that video and then I like, yeah, I, I just stopped and deleted that. And then anyway, when I tried to get it back, it was like, uh, it had gone, it had vanished. So I had to restart again, but I've made it to level 34. So I'm pretty happy with that. Right, so I've got, I've written out a list, a whole list of all these different things that I, I pre-wrote down because there's so much I need to say, and so here we are, I, yeah, so first of all, Seaport, a great game, a bit like Boom Beach, and so you've got the different buildings here, right? So you got the main one here, there's like the town hall, right? And so that's, that's like, if you upgrade that, then you unlock more buildings to unlock. So by the way, I'm starting with the basics and then I'll get into the more complicated stuff that I can assure you. Like, which is the best ship to buy? Which is the best diamond package to buy? Is doing this g deal right here, is it worth it? What are the chances you're going to get stuff back? I will cover all that. I'm just starting with the basics first. So you got the town hall here. This is the main building, right? So there we go. We got that right there. And so that is what you need to upgrade to get the other buildings unlocked. You've also got other things such as like the warehouse in which you can store certain commodities like so and that has a limit of course. Then you got the other stuff like you've got the wood, the rocks, the iron and the fish and you need that kind of stuff to upgrade things like your ships and your different buildings. You got the sailors and so they make you a profit per hour as well as the fact that you've got a limit on them which I'm currently reached and you need them to go sailing. Then you have your gold which also is used in upgrades as well as your diamonds right here. The gems, gems as they're called, and then you've got, of course, you've got things like the, the foundry, you've got the things like right tap there, which got us some XP, you've got the quarry, we've got sawmills, and, and so on. So we've got the different machines right there that generate us resources, then of course you've got the really important one, which is the main dock, and based on that determines how many is in your fleet, so currently I've got a maximum fleet of eight. Then over here, we've got this right here, and this generates you the fish, so it's the fishing pier, also another crucial building. Right, so I'm going to move straight on to the, right, okay, I'm just looking, at, right, oh yeah, and also another thing to note is the main ones that you want to upgrade first, the key ones to upgrade, there's uh, uh, specifically the fishing pier, the the sawmill, and then you've got the foundry, and then you've got the quarry over here. So these are things that uh, produce your resources, so you want those machines going non-stop, they are very key, and another really, really key one is the main dock, that is also extremely important to do, because then you get more ships, and you can level up and get a ton of stuff much quicker. One, The two that you don't really care about is the house and the warehouse. They're the last ones you upgrade. You do care about them, you do upgrade them, but they're the ones, they're the least of your concern. Don't worry about them till later. You want to focus on the resource generation buildings first. And also another thing, we want to keep them going, so we'll put that on like so, and we'll get them in action already. So there we go. We've got those in action, we've got the fish getting collected as well. Okay, so here is the question, and it is, what is is the best diamond pack to buy. Now there are occasionally ones that pop up and it's like a deal and that those ones are m most like the most commonly they're the best to buy. They're the best value but I, I think that compared to other games this game has very very pricey gems for what you're getting. Like considering that you can win you see like look, that's $150 and you can win $150 over $150 worth is New Zealand dollars which is similar to Australian dollars and it's like yeah but as you can see you can just win so many just like that rather than having to buy them but of course it's a low chance but which of these four is the best one and of course it will be different amounts money amounts for different countries but it will generally be proportional and the rule of thumb is the more you get the better the value and so translating that value for the top one you get and this is New Zealand dollars by the way you get 25 gems or like 25.3 but I'm just going to say the nearest whole number so you get 20 with this pack here the $150 one you get 25 
Right tap tap there tap there. Twenty oh right no no we don't want that not yet. No twenty five gems per dollar in value. Then for this one here the one thousand six hundred the, the one that's seventy five dollars you get twenty two gems per dollar. And for the one that's thirty dollars it's twenty gems per dollar. And for the bottom one it's eighteen gems per dollar. And so of course the bigger the better but of course still very expensive. But Ideally, rather than getting a ton of the smaller packs, you want to save up for the big ones, if possible, because it's it's better value. So I just thought I'd put that in there just to compare the value. So larger is better in terms of that. And now this one here, this is an extremely interesting one that I calculated it just like the other, just yesterday, because I was so interested. I, I never thought of it. But it's technically, it's it's similar to gambling in a way, because it contains three random chests, like items chosen from the, and it's, it's not like, it's sort of like, like gambling in a sense because you don't know what you're going to get it's not quite like gambling but yes so the question is is it worth it spending those 200 diamonds to get all this stuff here there's a ton of stuff and the question is what what's that and and also the chances have been added i don't recall in previous times that there were chances probabilities to go by but now they've been added it, it's really really useful and really interesting and it helps you inform your decision so basically what I did is I calculated, well, what is the chances, of course, you're going to get that. So technically it's a drop chance of 0 0.4, but since the key thing is you get three random items, it's actually 1.2. So what I did is I assumed that you'd get 100 of these, right? So you'd buy 100 of them. So you'd spend 100, which is times the 200 gems. And what? how many are you going to get of each of these? How many values? So for example, you'd get 1.2 of these, because it's percentage-wise, and if you buy 100 packs, then you're going to get 1.2. So for this one here, you get 4,800, because it's 1.2 times the, the 4,000, which is... Uh, right, not, no, not 1,500, no, yeah, 4,800 gems or whatnot. But anyway, then I calculate to work out, well, what's the chances you're going to get gems back? And I'm talking long run here because this is by averages. Of course, in the, in the short run, you might be unlucky and just get, like, things like that, the lower ones. But you might be real lucky and hit the long one, the, the like really big one and so that's the that's the one that you want to get but not necessarily the one you're going to get so of course in order to work out the chances that you'll get it you just times it by three like that you get it at any one point so it, it's still very low 1.2 percent chance quite low but still one in a hundred people ish will get it so the question is will you get more diamonds back on average than you put in and of course the answer is no because of course they wouldn't want to do that that you get more diamonds back than you're spending on it and so i've worked out that for every 200 diamonds you spend, on average, you'll get 127.5 back. So for every one of, one of those chests you'll buy, you'll get on average 127.5 gems back on average, which is pretty reasonable. I think it's like 67% or something around that. So yeah, 127 gems, uh, meaning meaning then, if you were taking it long run, uh, if you and this is accounting for all the diamonds that you can get, long run, there's a, then a seven, yeah, um, the, it's the, in effect, it's that you're paying 72.5 diamonds to get one of the, like, three of these things here. So, 70, it's, it, because if you account for all the diamonds, the diamonds you'll get back and the diamonds you spend, and you remove all those, but based on the diamond for diamond trades and how much you get back, it's left with the average chest would cost 72.5 gems for the non-gem items. So the question is, are you willing to spend 72.5 gems, well, we'll just say 72, for getting three of these different types of things? Like, and then, of course, they all have their own probabilities. But, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting thing just to let you know that, you, you of course, you're going to get less diamonds back, but you'll get 127.5 on average back for all those diamonds for those 200 you put in. And then all the rest of them, the 72, would get you some of these other things. So I did it, and I managed to get this ship here, which I'm, I'm sort of happy about. But yeah, that's just an interesting diamond, diamond fact for you, just to help you make better choices around that. Now, another thing that you always want to be doing is you always want to be cycling what's called the captain's task list. So you always want to be going through that because it gives you rewards. So currently, I need to finish two uh, finish voyage to destination bamboo. So let's say we collect that and we collect that, right? So there we go. And we'll tap this and we'll say, well, where's bamboo? And bamboo happens to be here. So there we go. We'll put that one there and we'll put that one there. And so when they return, then I'll complete that and then I'll get a reward for that. Now, sometimes it doesn't 
doesn't do it immediately, but yeah, it, I will get a reward for that, and you want to try and cycle that task list as much as possible. That is definitely something that's always handy. Also, you want to always be tapping these things here. These things here are little crates or barrels or like the helmet things that are in there, and you want to tap them because they give you rewards, as well as the fact that then you end up getting these achievements, and they're all super helpful. They give you diamonds and XP and coins, and so yeah, you want to tap them because I think one of the, I'm not sure, I I'm pretty sure one of them's a tapping one. I thought so, or maybe not. Maybe it's not. May I don't know. But anyway, what you do want to tap them because they do give you resources, and it, it, it's free resource, so it's like you definitely want to do them. So that is one thing that I would always recommend. Another thing is you always want to collect the daily chests, right? So if we come up here, here the daily chests. You know, sometimes it's a crash submarine. Sometimes it's... There's all different types, but it's like the shipwrecks. You'll know what they are. They come up in red. They're in the sea, and it, it takes an hour to reach them, and and so you always, always, always want to do them. They are always very beneficial. They give a huge reward, right? If we, if I come through here, right? Uh, like, so yeah, you want to be sending a ship there every single day, like so, and then pressing set sail. And so then they'll go and collect that. That is definitely a beneficial reward. And also, if you have the lighthouse, which is unlocked at the Town Hall 4, you can do one contract a day, which then will get you uh, some XP. And so that's always real cool. You, it's just one player like randomly generated I think per day and so then you like the actual players but then you can go visit them and you can do that once a day if you want to up to you whether they do that that's sort of a semi one I, I'd consider doing it maybe depending on the resource it demands and the reward but yes always do always do the the submarine things you know the crashed ones you know which ones I'm talking about and always yeah keep collecting those resources okay so another thing is that you always want to use the best ships right so you always want to use the best ship that are most suited to the thing. So what I mean by that is, for example, we don't want to send, we don't want to send a real good one, right? So see this one here, we, we press this, and then come over here and press it there. Like, the sale cost is 25, right? We don't want to be using 40, right? Because as you can see, there, there's a 15 gap. So we want to use the best ships that are best suited for the task. So for example, some of them are 40, but since it doesn't matter on cargo when collecting those things, you want to use minimal cargo. So for example, this one's 40 people, but it is 11 cargo. So, in, in which case, I'd want to use this one here, because this is only six cargo that it's using up. So, I want to use that one instead, and ideally even these ships here when they return, and I'll, I'll use them to go and get it. But, for example, for this purpose, I'm just going to use this one. So, we tap here, and then we get that one. So, that one's more suited than this one, because if I use this one, I'll be wasting a ton of cargo space. So, you want to be using the best ships for the best purpose. And, okay, so moving on to when buying ships. Okay, so moving on to the buying ships right here. Now, when buying ships, the, the question arises, do I want to buy, like, first of all, the diamond ships, or the ones with five stars instantly, or, or all, all sorts of questions, but the main question is, do you want to buy the ones right near the start, like so, like the real early, the, the ones that are near the start that are much cheaper than that, or do you want to get the ones that are much later, right? And so it's actually, I've sort of had a change of perspective perspective based on something but in my last video I, I i advocated buy the latest one you know it's like you know if you're buying a computer right and you, and you have enough money to do it you don't just want to buy an, an average one that's been out for ages and it's gonna lose get you know it won't be supported much longer you know that it, like it's still in the shop for sale like you just want to go straight to the latest there's no point buying one that you know is going to be useless fairly, fairly soon like in a few like let's say one will be useless in five years and one will last 10 years right you want to get the one that's going to last 10 years and that's this equivalent with the ships and buying you want to buy the latest one because what's the point of getting all the other ones that you're just gonna have to throw out fairly soon and so in the last video I said don't get those early ones they're a waste of time get the latest ones but I have changed my perspective on that slightly and the only reason which I would advocate getting these ones here like this one here is the fact that it gives you a ton of XP, and and XP is crucial. You want to be leveling up really quick, if possible, because if if you level up quick, then you get the the rewards. You know, from when when you level up, you get a reward, and the rewards are really beneficial and help you in turn process uh, I mean, progress really fast. And so, hence, you want to be getting as many of those rewards as possible, and you need XP to do that. And so, the ships buying them gives you that opportunity to do that. And so, although I'm buying these ships, and I'm probably not even going to use them it gives you that bonus from buying them. So for example, if I buy this one, I don't want it. I'm probably not going to use it slightly better than some of the ones I have, but I'd definitely rather get some of the other ones 
it's it, like the later one it's like still worth it because it's going to give me 250 xp and also you do want to upgrade them and also another thing to note is like if you like so if we see here so if we tap there like so we've got the ship and as you can see next to the the things you know next to the little person icon so I, i'm talking about the ship on the left right now you've got the thing that says 30 next to the people and then the one in brackets now the one in brackets is the maximum one that you can upgrade it to so i just thought i'd point that out there put that out there so the one in brackets is the maximum capacity it can be upgraded to if you get it to five star and then the bottom one which is the cargo which is six that's the the base one you'll get when you buy the one star and it can be upgraded to 10 so i'll go ahead and we'll buy it i'm yeah it's slightly better than some that I have, but I, it's going to be redundant pretty soon. And so there we go. We'll buy that one there, and boom, we got a ship. We also got 250 XP for that. So that ship is that. I don't, I'm not sure, sure exactly where it is. Right, okay, so it's, it's not currently in port. But that then got me XP for doing so, and so that is sort of the trade-off. The early ones get you some more resources, and of course when you get super high, I don't know, you probably can't afford to go and get all these middle ones, but when you're early on, actually getting those low ones can be beneficial because it does give you that XP that is required and really helpful for progressing. Although the later ones are also really good, like, I, I prefer the later, like, you know, the most updated ones, because they technically are, like, much better and much more useful and can get you more resources. Now, there is also the question, and it's, well, do I buy, you know, the diamond ones, right? Because we've got the diamond ones here for 450. I would say most likely don't do it, don't waste your diamonds on that, I, mean, I always say diamonds because I play Heyday, uh, gems, you know, don't spend it, I, it's, it's definitely not worth it, I don't think, like, when you can get other ones for just regular materials, it's like, I wouldn't go out of my way to spend the, the gems on those types of ships, maybe at real high levels that's, it's beneficial, it quite possibly is, but at the lower levels, you don't, don't spend, like, yeah, just don't spend the diamonds on them, I'd, I'd recommend, yeah, just don't spend the diamonds on them, that's that's all I have to say on that. And so yes, then there's like okay, right. So now I'm just just looking at my notes right here. Oh yes, that's right. Now be aware that some ships require gems to get to the final star. So I don't know if there's an example of this one here. This one here, the Saint Michael. I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure whether or not it is, but I think quite possibly some of those two that have you know the the seven star, those last two upgrades require diamonds. So although it's like oh great, this one looks good, it can get to seven star, and look at those maximum capacities, they're so high. Be aware some of those ones that are seven star do require diamonds for the final two upgrades so then it's like uh oh, sort of like mm, yeah not that's not really the best since they require diamonds so do be aware of that i just thought i'd point that out there okay now also yes uh, did yeah don't buy the diamond ships they're not worth it now there is such a thing as what's considered scout ships now scout ships are those that have next to like nada capacity like in order to actually transport stuff but are really great for exploring the map due to their high people and they can actually go out really far an example of that is this one here here, the Lepens. This one here, as you can see, has a hundred, which goes up all the way up to two hundred of the the people, the crew space, and so that's huge. But I would not, yeah. And so that that has its purpose, like, and so like, sure, it's great to have one or two of them. I think I won one of them. I, but yeah, I definitely I prefer the other ones better. But that's I'm just saying, I'm pointing that out that that is a specific type of ship that has very minimal cargo that it holds, so it's not very helpful for bringing you stuff. But it is good for like exploring new land real quick quickly and also for going out to real long distance ones so I just sort of point that out there that is a different category the scout ship now another real thing that is I would consider real obvious is keep the machines going 100% all of them all of them all of them keep the quarries going keep the sawmills going keep all these different things going and by the way there are limits so you, you can only have a maximum of like two sawmills and whatnot and like I think it's one quarry in there but keep them going non-stop they are the things that are going to be producing you those goods they're going to be getting them non-stop they're going to just keep producing you and you want to get as many goods as possible now another thing is you want to go for the journeys that are as long as possible so if we come over to destination by the way I haven't finished my sentence long as possible when you're going away so overnight for example you want to be sending them to the really the ones that are far away. Fort, see, ship, ship, 
set sail is four hours. It's a long time, but you'll get the maximum value out of them when they go, when, like if you're away for four hours or more, you'd want to send them to there. I would absolutely recommend. When you're active in that, you want to be sending them as close, well, often, like not always, but because sometimes you need them to do specific things, but often when you're active, real active, you want them to go to the close ones because they'll better value if you're on actively. So if you're on, you just keep sending them to like five minutes or to like the small town, which is two minutes and that. But yeah, that there. When you're on, you want to go to the close ones, and when you're not on for much, you want to be sending them to the the distant ones if possible. So that is another thing. And also go for ones that you have low resources of, for example, if possible. For example, I have a ton of wood. I don't need any more wood. Same with coins. I have a lot of coins. I don't need coins, so I don't want to be going out here and thinking, hmm, I could send mine to like the woods or like the coins. Like yeah, it's just don't don't. I wouldn't unless of course you're going for the close ones, which just build it up real quick, which is fine but yeah you ideally want to go for the resources such as like rock which I haven't got so I want to be sending them to get the rock because I need the rock to upgrade and so like if I look at the different things I want to upgrade with something I'm not sure there's certain things that you can upgrade but they require a ton of rock lot rock is often I find the one that you most need the most of and so that is the one I'd certainly advocate trying to get okay so that is another thing or also another thing is the cargo right so I'll just go to the cargo and bring that up right here so if we go here as you can see the cargo box so if we come along here the middle one so it's you know you've got the person icon then you got the little box icon and then the little like the anchor icon now the cargo one is how many you can get from each thing so like the the stuff so for example if we pr press veteran and it, it's seven right at uh, right wait in fact i'll see if i can get a more a more round number oh, okay 11's all right so if we go to small town right as you can see my cargo box is 11 and what they have is they then have a thing that says how much you'll get cargo times five. And so my 11 times five equals 55. So that there is how much I'd get. If I went, for example, for this one, it's 11 times five equals 55. This one here, 11 times 50, 550. You get the idea. That that box is how many you get. But some of them are real hard and it's only like they don't have a box. Like they don't, see this one's only times two. So it's 11 times the two cargo equals 22. So it's not huge. Some of them aren't times, but like ones like the fish ones are huge. Like times 160 is massive. So you get a whole heap for that. But I just thought I'll point that out in regards to the cargo thing. Also, another skill which might come in useful, especially in the later levels, and I'm sure it's it is space for it's like fixing it's like making the maximum possible amount of space. Because often what happens is you, you your thing gets crowded, like you, and you run out of room to place buildings. And also, by the way, you do want to buy all the buildings that you get immediately. That's also another thing. But so what you want to do is you want to put that you want to put one of them in the corner, right? This is to make sure that you have enough room to put a new building. You then want to put the all the other ones as close as possible to it and so you want to just slowly slot them all in like a jigsaw puzzle making the maximum possible amount of space and so then if we come in there right and then we put that one in there see we are there's a tiny bit of space in there behind there that's getting wasted so we want to try and put the larger buildings at the back of possible so you're trying to get them all against the side so the larger buildings in the corner is ideal right so there we go if we put that there and then we put that right back one like in there, perfect, and then this one over here, and as you can see, it's just like a big jigsaw puzzle, and we're trying to get the maximum amount of space, and like waste none, we want to use every single possible different piece that we can use, and so we'll come over here like that, and then we'll just, we'll just slowly slot them in, so I haven't done a Perf oh wait, I, I think, I'm not sure if that's, but it's like, as you can see, it's using virtually all the different spots I can possibly use, meaning that then there'll be, and you can, yeah, yeah some of the buildings are different lengths, so you want to use them different spots. As you can see, now I have all that space there, so that is something that you can do if you run out of space, put the large buildings in one corner, and then put them all right next to each other. It doesn't look great, but it means that there's more space to put new buildings if you so run out of room. So that is another thing. Also, I thought I would just say, I absolutely love this Jules Verne event. I love, like, Jules Verne is such a good author. Like, they, re they had Bob, Bob Eye, like, Popeye, like, a few months ago, and that was awesome. I, I used to watch Popeye when I was a kid. And then they have Jules Verne. It's like, oh, Jules Verne is the best! Like, it's it's from his book. I think it's, uh, is it Around the World in 80 Days or 50 Days? I'm not sure. I haven't read that book. But I do love his, his novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That was an awesome, awesome novel. I haven't actually read the novel, but, well, some, uh, part of it, but not much of it. But the movie, 20,000 Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, which is based on the book by Jules Verne, is an awesome movie, and so I do, I do really think, I was like, it's so cool, like how the, the 
pixel team what's it like pixel federated pixel or whatever the, the group that does this game does a really good job at integrating you know historic people regarding boats and seaports and like different things like that i think they've done an amazing job so there we go we'll press there we go see look and jules Verne. you know he looks the part he looks awesome right there and so yes i do actually i love how they've implemented jules Verne. i think that's so so cool as well as they've even got the titanic in there you know all historic boat things and i think you can tell their love for the game, you know, for the love for boats and that. It shines through in the different characters they put. They're actually really doing their history. They're actually really searching and researching. Well, what what is some stuff? Like, probably they already loved all these characters before they made the game, which inspired them to make the game. I'm just saying, you can certainly see the, the love of the, the boat-related things in this game. And so I do applaud them for that. I'm a big fan of Jules Verne. I think awesome, awesome, awesome. There we go. So collect that. And so that there, I'll g grab that one right there. Okay, now another... Another skill to have, which is a little bit like suiting that suiting the right ship for the right thing, is working out what goes where. It's it's like a puzzle in the sense that, as you can see, I've got all my different boats. And by the way, you always want to have all your boats going as well. You don't want to have them just idle. You always have them going non-stop. Just always keep them getting something at least. Okay, there we go. We'll put that and that and on. Okay, but what you want to do is you don't want to use way too much on certain things. Now, what I mean by that is, for example. As I said before, for example, I wouldn't want to use, like, one that can... Get, see this one here? It takes 11, right? I don't want to use it on this one here. It's a waste. But if we come over here to, like... I'm just trying to work out one that we need, like, a certain amount. That one there is also doesn't affect it. But I'm just thinking... This one here, Jules Fern, right? So there we are. Oh, no, that he's not the best... Oh, well, he's, he's awesome. I'm just talking about how I'm going to work this out. Right. So, yeah, what you want to do is you want to send... The, the the ships that the ships that you least need that are the least value to the closer ones if possible you want to leave the long distance ones first so it's like a jigsaw puzzle in regards to doing stuff so let's say we go over here and let's we'll just do this one okay so there we go we'll tap there we'll tap there right and then we'll wait for these ships to come in and in fact we'll tap there as well there we, oh, oh yes yes perfect okay right here so I've actually I've messed it up but this here is a great example right so as we can see this one here is this is an amazing ship right here it's 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 great okay but if we come over here right and it's got 10 cargo remember so 10 cargo times 2 would be a total of 20 delivery right but the maximum i can do is 4 and four is useless. It means that I'll be wasting 16 worth of space. So you want to do the minimal ships for the minimal thing. So for example, I want to do the smallest one possible that delivers four. So you want to slot them all in so it works well, so you don't have huge waste. So for example, it would be a terrible waste of me to send this one here, which would send 20 worth of gold in, only sending four in. I'd be wa wasting like uh, so much of their space right there, eight of their space would be wasted. So instead of finding a more suitable one, for example, this one's seven. So this one here would be more suitable, but there, there's even more suitable ones. So for example, I'll send this one here, for example, over to, let's say, go collect that right there. Okay, so that one's gone over here, and then these ones here should be back from the small town right here. Okay, and so then we'll wait for them to come back, and then we'll be able to see, if we tap on it right here, tap, there we go, okay, so, oh, yes, 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 how did I miss that? Okay, and another another thing, I don't know how I missed that, is also downgrading your ships. Now, what I mean by that is when you have more than, like, if you have more than what your capacity is for the main dock, then what you want to do is you want to be using the best ship. Yeah, that's what I meant, I misread my thing. So, as in using the best ship, as, for example, you want to use the ones that have the most highest capacity of different things. And so, this one here, as you can see, and it, it highlights it well with a nice red icon, it means that there's a better ship of mine that I own that I can use and so I want to use that one so you always use this and so you downgrade it and see so as you can see the Hulk Zigbund has more than this one for example it has 30 and 6 whereas this one here right oh it's, it's coming back this one here has 30 uh, and not that one right oh, I, I, it's gone now where, where did it go honestly I uh, maybe anyway but see yeah there, there we go it's Wait, wait, uh, yeah, that, yeah, 30 and 4 versus 30 and 6. So this one has more cargo, so you want to use this one over the other one because it's more value. And so that's something that you definitely want to uh, do if possible. Okay, and we'll send that one off there. But as you can see, then this one here will be more value. You'll be getting more value out of it. Rather than having one that's, that only gives you four cargo, you'll be getting one that has six cargo. So you want to use the better ones of your ships. Okay, and then we can also upgrade it, which will then, as you can see, give us XP. And then we we'll see lots of XP. There's so much XP. There we go. So we do want to upgrade them if possible. There we go. And then upgrade it again. And that will probably... Oh, there we go. Level up next. 
next level and I got a reward there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So as we can see this one, oh, well, now it's so good. But of these three here, which one would I want to send to that destination? And of course, it would be the one that gives that wastes the least, which happens to be this one right here, because that's only five cargo, whereas those two are ten. So we want to send that one in, not the ones that use the most. So we'll send that one in there. And also the task list is complete. So there we go. So we got a reward of 300 of that. And then we'll have to complete doing those. And then as you can see, we've got this here, which is a 351 and a 10 one. So we want to use this one up first for a closer destination if we can. For example, this one, if I want to go to Jules Verne, right, I, I can use this one. Or I can use this one right here, right? But the difference is I have to consider, well, actually, what one is going to be more useful? So which which one which one am I going to want to use first? So you want to use up the lower ones first. For example, that's 40 and 10, and that's 310. Now, had I gone ahead and used this one first for a long distance one, like, um, I mean, gone ahead and used up my better one first and then done it, then this one here wouldn't have been able to reach the rock which I want to reach. So, for example, I'll put this one here, I mean, the, the, the one that the lid, the smaller one on first on Jules Verne. So we go, we set sail, and then I can use this one for the longer distance one for the rubble, because that one's the better one. So I wanted to leave the better ones to last and get the smaller ones to be used up first so I can officially go ahead and I can go and do this. So we'll send him off there, that ship off there. So there she goes. Right, so, and then we'll tap that, tap that, tap that. So yeah, you do want to upgrade your ships, and you do want to use them for the, so you don't want to be wasting too much and using a really good ship to complete a really small order. And look, we can even upgrade that. Can we upgrade this one here yet or not? No, okay, but we'll upgrade that one there. That one's fine. Okay, so upgrade that. Sweet. And so, yeah, and then we even got level up. And so that is another thing that you want to do in regards to where you're sending the different ones. Okay, and so then the cargo, right, looking, looking, looking at this. Yeah, so yeah, that is basically it with all my hints. It was quite a long video, but there was a ton of info in there. So please do let me know in the comments what you thought. Do you play Seaport? Did you find any of them helpful? I'm sure that you learned at least something new, especially about those diamonds. So I would love to hear what you think. Please like it if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you're new to my channel and you do enjoy Seaport, so then I can make some more Seaport videos. This has been your host, Supersite. And remember to make coins and rock and iron and lumber and everything else faster than honeybees make honey.